Hey guys, my name is Fape and welcome back to another vlog. So this is basically part two to the vlog of last week, the lab. And uh, la at the end of last vlog I showed you my, what was it, six liters of culture? There you can see it. <laughs> in the incubator. And today I recorded a little bit of the harvest procedure of these yeast cultures. So most of the harvesting is already done. Right now I'm actually waiting on the centrifuge to be done. And once the centrifuge is done, I gotta be pretty fast and get the supernatant uh, medium of the cell pellets. But you're gonna see that here in the second. So basically what you do, you have the cultures in the shaker overnight. Six of these flasks, as you can see there, uh, with two liters each. And six, three of the flasks, I think, for this culture actually only. Uh, the other one was six. This one was only three times uh, two liters, so not too big, not too stressful. Um, but you still, once they are grown to the certain um, optical density, so a certain density of cells in the solution, you gotta harvest them pretty quickly because otherwise they will change states. If these yeast cells grow too densely, they gonna actually change their metabolism a little bit and you would rather harvest them before they have the chance to change their metabolism to get them in a more natural state. <laughs> and yeah, most of the time they are just uh, is me waiting for the centrifuge to be done. It's only five minutes per spin. I think going after protocol is even ten minutes, but um, I've mostly done only five minutes uh, to be faster, and it usually was long enough either way. So the important thing when you're actually centrifuging is that you always balance out the load. But I'm uh, gonna talk more about that a little later. Sounds like centrifuge is done, I just opened it up and now you see the little cups that I have to use. Those are the biggest cups we have for the SLC. That's the cell pellet you can see right there and the rest is all um, pretty clear liquid, which is the medium. Of course it still has the color, but it is uh, clear compared to the culture I showed just earlier. It was still pretty opaque when the cells are still suspended in the medium. And I just dis uh, discard the medium there. Uh, this was just an empty flask there we are, that I already emptied out earlier. And man, this stuff usually is quite the mess to deal with because just pouring these liquids from one container to another and there's always dribblets around and it's really, really sticky stuff. So this medium, it's uh, a little bit like jelly, maybe? Not really, I mean it's still quite a liquid, but it's sticky like that. If you have like a fruit jam or so in the morning, um, it's about that kind of sticky when you grab, when you put your hand in it and then it sticks everywhere. And it's it's kind of gross, but uh, it's okay. You can wash your hands afterwards. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I try to keep the cell pellet on the top of the cup, so the medium, as soon as possible, um, loses contact and is not able to resuspend the cells. Because the longer you keep the medium on the cell pellet after centrifuging, the higher the chance is that the pellet at least partially resuspends in the solution and that means you lose cells and you don't want it. You want as many cells as you possibly can have and ah, these little um, cups are some kind, sometimes um, the top is not so easy to get off but I managed. So those were, so there are six of these cups in one centrifuge uh, rotor and each can hold a little bit above 900 milliliters. I think I mentioned that somewhere at some point. Okay, so this was full now. And uh, got an empty one to fill up now. And I think there's only one uh, flask left with actual culture in it. This is the third run of the centrifuge already. I just remembered to record the last one of them. Um, it's always the same thing, so nothing too fancy. The only difference is but as you can see, that's the fifth cup that I pulled up the centrifuge and I only have like two more liters to go, so I only need four more cups um, to spin the rest down. So I'm gonna put these last two cups already on uh, ice. I have like a container with some ice back there to keep the cell pellets cool and uh, you need to keep them cool because when your proteins and stuff uh, heats up there's always a higher chance that if you have complexes of proteins sticking together that they fall apart So you want to keep it as cool as possible at all times 
and you want to work as fast as possible at all times so most of your protein complexes uh, are still sticking together because some of them are quite unstable I'm not sure how mine actually behaves because there hasn't been uh, done enough research on it yet um, so that is actually why I have to be still careful because I don't know how sensitive it actually is so that is the last little bit of culture from that flask oh it was actually six flasks wasn't it well, no, only three flasks, and that is the last one there. Yeah, it was six, actually. Um, <laughs> it's been a week since I recorded that, so I don't quite remember. You can see it's really still opaque. All the cells are still swimming in the solution until they get uh, spun down in the centrifuge. And they don't need to fill them up completely because I don't have that much left. And that's the important part, trying to get it exactly balanced out. Because if you have... It not balanced out in the centrifuge it spins up to over 4000 g and at that at the, that rate every single gram you got too much in one of this on one of the side of the rotor keeps gets get over balance and that can sum up and actually the centrifuge can uh, get broken if you have too fast and that's the really 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 old school scale to balance it out course with the top of the cups as well and now I gotta find the right amount <laughs> to balance out these cups for the centrifuge thing no nah, not quite yet you can see it still went all the way down on the left there but now it should be fine mm, yeah as you can see it's not going quite all the way down anymore it's not resting that's the most important thing um, it doesn't have to be really exact because it's quote unquote only going up to 4000 G. We have centrifuges that are ultra centrifuges that go up to several tens of thousands of G. Um, or RPMs, I should say. I'm not entirely sure about the G for that case. But uh, yeah, for those, you gotta be exact to the milligram. And these are, yeah, quote unquote only uh, 4000 something G. So you don't have to be as perfect but you still they should be balanced out really really well already oh that was too much so I gotta pour something back over and nope still too much yeah that's kind of a pain sometimes you get it right first try and that makes you always feel like a badass <laughs> like you don't even have to yeah you know exactly how how you balance it out how you pour it in but then sometimes it happens like this where I have to pour over and pour over and pour over and then I finally got it so those are only four this time and I think I'm gonna show in a second how I put them actually in the centrifuge so you can see the rotor yourself and of course it's a cooling centrifuge which is basically making all the noise in the background it's uh, constantly cooling it down to four degrees here we go all right taking the cups and opening up a centrifuge and putting that sucker in as you can see there's spaces for six made out of uh, carbon there you go put it in there too and the other two who are barely filled um, yeah of course it's important that you have the ones that you balance out opposite of each other otherwise the whole balancing wouldn't make much sense put the top on screw it so it holds. There we go. Close it off. And here we go. Start. And this is just a little shot of the cell pellets once the medium is over. That's the ice that I left on. And uh, the next step would actually be to resuspend these pellets in water. Then basically wash them, centrifuge them again to get rid of the water and then you can freeze them in uh, liquid nitrogen and store them in a minus 8 degree uh, Celsius freezer. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, once again a little lab video. I'm not sure if there's going to be any more of that. Those are just some basic procedures that I managed to record. Uh, anyways, uh, if you enjoyed it leave a like, let me know in the comments what you think and I'll catch you all next time.